California is a very rich state with the fifth largest economy in the nation. But the inequities in the kind of education you receive, like so many things, are determined by zip code and geography. And when you add elements of race and class on top of it, it is clear we have very serious issues. In the big picture, what you see is the schools and the communities that have the least resources to start with end up with the least resources. So the richer schools get richer and the poorer schools get poorer when the cost of providing an education is almost identical in both cases. This was an effort to look at all the research in the state of California to try to distill what are the four or five reasons that are holding back uh, achievement, uh, academic and life outcomes for our students. And one of the issues was the underfunding of teacher pensions. The equity implications are real. If you're a member of the school board, you are managing a budget that includes contributions to teacher pensions, and that percentage increased over the last few years because of the underfunding of teacher pensions. At the same time, the cost of producing that education has risen significantly. And in some areas like the pension, the contributions towards pensions have doubled or tripled in many districts. And that puts a strain on each individual district's budgets. And what does that mean? That means we have to increase class sizes. We have, we can't have as many teachers teaching because we can't afford to pay the associated pension costs. So we're delivering less education with more money because we're having to take that money and put it into those debts that we've accrued over the last several decades. As we started to see the initial pension um, increases requirements at the, at the district level, I think that people were thinking about it less and sort of a side blinded us, right? And we're like, oh my God, we're going to have to start cutting because we're getting all these additional costs for pensions. It's happened in my district in the past, like you cut things like music and art, right? And so when we are faced with really hard choices and those are the things that get cut, um, then you, you also are making education less interesting for kids. The downturn in California's education system really began with the passage of Proposition 13 in the late 70s. This put a 2% cap on localities and communities on their ability to increase property taxes, which fund in part California schools. We've always had inequity in our education system in California. But the cap on property taxes really affected low-income areas who never had a whole lot of wealth to begin with. That bill mandates that all districts pay a flat percentage of their payroll towards pension costs and increase contributions across the board for state and local school districts. After AB 1469 accelerated these contribution rates into the pension system, the share of education dollars going into state retirement plans jumped 103% between the years 2014 and 2020. This has exasperated existing inequities in education and has squeezed under-resourced and low-income districts. Where you see a big gap is between districts, is, is between those districts that are funded through the state and, and what are called basic aid districts, right? These are districts where they have such high property values that the money that they bring in from their property taxes actually exceeds what the state is required to give. If you have districts side by side, one district, a basic aid district, could be funded like at $20,000 a student. Uh, and so they actually have a lot of flexibility in how they use that money. And then right next door to them, they have, you know, if, a, if a district's funded by the state, you know, they may be getting ten to $12,000 a student. Um, think about those gaps, right? And how, how much somebody, one school can play a teacher versus the other school district. The way our current funding formula works when it comes to pensions is that local districts set teacher salaries, but the state still pays an equal share of pension costs for each district. This means that wealthy districts who pay more effectively will receive a larger state pension subsidy than lower income, lower resource districts who cannot afford these high salaries. We have a situation in which teachers who have mastered their craft and are engaging their students are recruited to go to other districts who can pay more. So you now have low-income, low-resource school districts, often with younger teachers with fewer years of experience without the support and mentorship of those experienced teachers. 
And so you are really, we're just facing a teacher shortage that is in part driven by the inequities of the of uh, school financing, resource equity. We saw that in our district, you know, our, our salary costs, our um, employee costs was pushing like 90% of our budget. It means there's very little money to do to, to have really rich programs. It's a resource allocation issue, not a resource generation issue. Politicians, our elected officials, don't want to engage in this discussion because pensions are down the road, someone else's problem, highly contentious, and hard to fix because it's going to require a, um, a compromise. There's no single entity, there's no single group that is stepping forward and saying, okay, at the state level, we need to be responsible and figure out how to make this system um, honor the work, honor honor our employees who are retiring and, and, want, and we wanna make sure that, they, that they're able to live, um, live well as they retire, but also that we have a system that is sustainable into the future, right? And is not taking away from current students in classrooms. The people who I think will ultimately pay the price by continued inattention to this particular issue are students in low resource school districts and teachers who face an uncertain retirement because of this underfunding. This thing looming over our heads um, and it's just gonna become more burdensome unless we find a solution that works for everybody. This is about equity. And when it is about equity, Different voices need to be in the room, carving out those solutions, participating in those discussions about how to address these complex issues.